to steal my clothes all the time. Alrighty, welcome back to the Son of a Boy Dad podcast. We are live from HQ3. Me, Ron, Francis. Hello. Hi. A little noise for the, you know, kind of the ambiance. Energy. Yeah, creating a very coffee Cre- shop vibe. Creating a little bit of energy, like, yeah. a, but also like a maraca kind of thing. Guys, I got something trouble troubling to uh, to let get off my chest. Let's hear it. Yesterday, I took our beautiful English setter. Oh, beautiful Ruby. I mean, just a magnificent dog. Show dog quality. (laughs) She's amazing. Amazing, like a steed. $30,000. That's not right. Yep. Had to take out a loan for her. (laughs) Put a lien on his house just so we could have this dog. (laughs) She was, when Sass was in the car with us, she would lean forward and put her head on his shoulder, and he'd be like, ugh. (laughs) That's not what happened. Only human I've ever I seen. I actually said, I don't mind. And Francis kept on going, he hates dogs or t- saying it to the dog. Yeah. I was saying talking he to her. Hates I'd be like, dogs. He's not one that you want to try this way. And it's not, it's not your fault. Don't, don't internalize it. She yeah. would sit she's on nasty. my lap in the car, which was, she's a pretty big dog. She loves him. She's, she's a big pounds. dog to be 44 pounds. She's to be lean, sitting on some of a dog. Yeah, forty-four just, pounds, but a lot of uh, it's long hair, so she's bigger presenting. Yes. if you shaved her down, she'd look like a greyhound. Yeah, she, he's just one of those people that doesn't like beings, g- kind, loving animals. No, I love dogs. Uh-uh. You say that I like that my dogs. Be proper, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, could anyway, propaganda. Uh, anyway, you have your beautiful. Yeah, the, the dog canine. that that Sass shunned. He show dog. She, we we were taking her to. <laughs> I took her to get groomed yesterday. Oh. She needed that. That place. <laughs> <laughs> you'd think she would have been done getting groomed after she got off of me because i was covered in hair <laughs> <laughs> well i took her i took her and it's there's a guy works at the store she hates it she hates when i bring her in there she pulls against the leash she knows what it's up she doesn't like it oh is this the one that you thought was fucking the dog that's right yeah oh uh, you goes, took her back there goes the whole story <laughs> well you told us this already on the podcast yeah but now i'm more sure of it Okay, continue. yeah, no, so this is like a... Next now I'm worried two. about it. Okay, so what happened? Now I'm now I'm hooked. Now I'm hooked in. He runs the store by himself, <laughs> and it's a pet store, and in the back, they have this grooming area yeah. that, that is sort of locked away, and there's... You, like the basement in Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like a, when you go to a gun range, and you gotta, you gotta close one door before you open the other. No, but it's it's like a red room. Oh God! It's like a room from you know Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, there's rose. There's a big everywhere. metal table, and then there they they have sort of a four way chains. I don't think it's chains, but sex wings, a way I to think secure is what, yeah. the dog because they don't like it, and you have to prevent them from because he's clipping them. And so then she comes out of there, and she's she, you know I pick her up, and she's all cleaned and trimmed, and she's a little woozy. So I think he's expressing her anal glands. He does do that. <laughs> Whether she needs it or not. Right. She does need it. But he's just probing around. How does he even know she needs it? Even finding that out is treacherous. I know. But I think he's slipping her a drug to make her acquiescent. Really? Well, you should definitely ask. Well, he's not going to come clean about having a... Uh, a nasty, dirty relationship with a dog. I know. True. Francis will never bring him back. Now, am I a bad owner for continuing to bring her back, even with this suspicion? Because if I'm honest, he does do the best grooming job. Yeah, that's the two questions. How well, good you of a have job? to. If you're going to fuck the dogs, you got to do the best grooming job anyone's ever done. There's a part of me that thinks, what a master that he's able to get his nut and then finish... The grooming. No, he's definitely nutting after the grooming. Oh, that's a good point. Because he's like, look at what I've done. Look what I've created. But then, and then what he it... fucks the dog. He's like, this is so good, I gotta fuck it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> is he washing it? Does he wash it down Jesus afterwards? Christ. Is the dog washed? <laughs> I mean, I dude, I you're the one that... A, I thought <laughs> I was doing a bit. <laughs> yeah, you're the one that's then... bringing it up. And you brought it home. <laughs> I brought it up, but you brought it home, brother. You tucked it in bed. <laughs> you fucking said. Read it a bedtime story. <laughs> I don't think that that's milk. not crazy. <laughs> He's so, so this guy's fucking your dog. That's the concern. I, I think that it, it if you're, what, what's her. You gotta uh, kill him. 
No, 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 definitely not that. Because once you first you said he's do, if he's doing a good job, it's worth it. Second of all, what's her disposition afterwards once she gets home? Is she tuckered out? She's a little tuckered, uh, but she seems to know that she looks good. So she's she's a Preening. resilient. She's resilient. Yeah, he makes her feel pretty. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's it. I think that there's an element. He's giving her a lot of treats to keep her quiet. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, have a you lot ever seen- of hush money? <laughs> Did you hush have to sign an NDA? Hush puppies. Uh, no, we didn't have to sign anything, and you pay in cash. It's all pretty seedy. I'm not gonna lie. And not only that, but when he goes back to groom the dogs, there's no one left to run the store. He's the only employee there. They're selling dog food and chew toys. Well, we should set up a sting. There's a couple ways we could do it. We could go Break human it in, human in a dog outfit. <laughs> that's that dude. That's what I was thinking as well. I was actually thinking that, and then in my head, I was like, "That's actually a pretty funny sketch idea." <laughs> <laughs> to have someone going in like a full-on mascot, <laughs> but dude, a guy like him, like he might be, he might see that and be like, "This is going to be my greatest nut ever." If he sees a human and a dog, I like that know. might be what he's been searching for. If he sees the Gonzaga bulldog walking, yeah, I remember yeah. watching a sting about this creepy dentist once, where a woman, he was, they people thought he was violating <laughs> patients while they were under the numbing or whatever. And uh, a woman special. volunteered herself as a, you know, undercover and he groped her. And I was like, I'm surprised they had to go that far. Yeah. With it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's that like feels the, like the South Park call where, that off. where the undercover officer goes in and like gets yeah. fucked in his ass by the prostitute because he's trying <laughs> to figure out if they're prostitutes. Right. It's like you didn't have to go all the way there. Mm. And who, whoever's signing up for it, like, is she going to now claim trauma? Probably. It's like, well, you... Especially if it was on TV. I mean, I'm not one to say people ask for it. Yeah, I think I think now, luckily, but... <laughs> what what they can do now, because this was, this was years and years ago, but now what you could theoretically do is instead of setting up hidden cameras and then doing the reviewing the footage after, you could set up a live feed. So the second he starts getting bad, you could jump in there with the crew. Chris Hansen walks out or yeah. something like that. Yeah. We need yeah. Chris Hansen everywhere. Michael Vick. We need Michael Vick everywhere. <laughs> Imagine Barstool did that, but the internet failed. What? And we like our live stream cut out. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, oh, we don't actually know. Yeah. And Twenty minutes later. We gotta do it again. Fucking I know you're just Tommy got... Smokes has been raped. <laughs> <laughs> Pete Overmeyer's like, look, I run sixteen different shows here. I can't keep track of this yeah the tech guys are just like sighing hard like, what are we supposed to do about this internet well it's got to go down rumble first so. <laughs> there's like a 600 million dollar media company and i can't even get one guy getting raped on camera <laughs> one of my best guys team portnoy tommy smokes oh all the evidence we have is jizz on the jumpsuit <laughs> <laughs> oh god that's not right but it's good because it's tommy it is. And he's the one where you could really joke about it. Absolutely. You could really lean into it. But the other way, I, like, you just send someone in, you just have the dog getting uh, whatever, uh, anal glands expressed in the back, and then you send someone else in the front of the store and see what he does. Does he rush out with a fucking apron on and a boner behind it? Oh, yes. Or, like, is it, like, can yes. you, or is the store completely locked? Is it completely shut down? Mm-hmm. You call. I think that there's ways that we could get to the bottom of this ourselves. Yeah, there's no way to uptuck a boner in an apron. It's also tough because yes. you can't ask anyone, like, even if you know someone that brings their dog there, you can't ask. Right. It's a wild thing to, you don't think he's fucking our dogs, do <laughs> <Yeah>. you? <laughs> That's a good way to end that relationship forever. And then their dog. <laughs> it's funny that you say that, Francis. No, or they're we like, well, having... why isn't he fucking my dog? Yeah, you know? yeah he yeah. feels guilt like a, uh, another like altar boy who didn't get touched. He's like, why not me? Yeah. <laughs> you know, he doesn't really like rescues. He only likes purebreds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it's short hair. There's you nothing to get bull? to the bottom of. <laughs> You're fine. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Ugly ass fucking dog. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would send my dog in, but it's a short. it has short hair. It doesn't really shed. doesn't really need grooming. It only could use the sex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fixed so it will really never know sexual desire in that way yeah. so like maybe um we could just see if there's like part like a uh, line item on the menu for just the sex yeah yeah like a secret menu type thing yeah ordering off the menu like the double burger yeah maybe just go in and ask 
I may do. Just be like, can you fuck my dog? <laughs> and then see based on his, because he's probably going to be like, what, dude? Uh, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I don't, we don't do that. I don't do that. I wouldn't do that. Why did they say something? Did someone say something? Did someone say we were fucking? Or you rec- who recommended you? Because we're we kind of on referrals. a three strike policy right now. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're on three. Having a, a referral or like a code word or something. Yeah, like. yeah. So here's something I was thinking about after the last episode. Uh, we so Sass and I hang out and go fishing on the weekends. And stand up. <laughs> our dogs are best friends, and we hang out together in our uh, place that we live. I'm yep. concerned about mm-hmm. you two keeping pace we have nothing where where how, how have i become the common link you're here? the linchpin yeah well I, I don't know that uh, the, the river should run through me i'm i'm gonna start taking up jewel pods just tooling around with don't, jewel pods don't you think you two should hang out to sort of we what what, what are we to do francis what can he i do with him he doesn't like anything except <laughs> for like gummy worms and fucking video games ron dude. and i hang out all the time <laughs> I don't and think we you text do. constantly. Yeah, yeah. Just a simple, how you doing, man? <laughs> you okay? Yeah, you checking it down today? Just seems checking low. In. Just trying to get to the bottom yeah. of it. Just, mm-hmm. You know, I'm always here for you. That kind of thing. Mm. When day on days when Sass feels low or seems low, I purposefully avoid him. I I could text him and reach out and be like, "Are you all right?" And I'm like, "No, he, he wouldn't want that. No, it would be bad. Got a lot at all stew." Yeah, yeah, he wouldn't want that. But we're at we're at an impasse. I don't know what the fuck to do. Yeah, I'm like about to start showing up at his fucking, like his shows or something like that. Well, you have done that in the past. <laughs> you should take up stand up. Yeah, I'm. Maybe yeah, um, we could talk rooms. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like I know all the rooms. I we feel could like talk I've, ceiling heights. I've heard enough about like pillar placement and fucking uh, like the appetizers that they have. That mm-hmm. I I feel like I'm connected, but. Just living vicariously. It's like hearing an NFL announcer break down the game. Like I, don't, I don't play football. Yeah, but I've heard Tony Romo talk enough about the fucking nachos at Magoobies that I feel like now I'm plugged in. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I don't know. I don't know what should I do, Francis. What? I think that's all there is left. Or video games. Well, he'll be. I well, think video thing, games is the big thing right now. Football was a thing, kind of. We did talk ball a lot. But uh, then, like, the good thing about. Uh, this little boy is that he gets a new hobby every like four months or something like that. Not really. It was pool for a while. Pool was big, but that was also a side effect of uh, alcoholism <laughs> <laughs> and an excuse to be at a bar and get drunk. You weren't even going to bars, bars. You were going to like full on pool halls. Yeah. We used to go all the time. Yeah. It was actually the fact that Francis was eating your lunch and the, no matter was... how hard you tried to fucking beat him, you couldn't. So you're like, let me do something that Francis doesn't do. Dude, I, you I started stopped tying drinking. like tiny knots. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped drinking and I have not had the urge to play pool once. But they were, they played pool this weekend next to me and I was like, I'm not fucking doing that. That shit sucks. Who did? That's the you old and Brandon game. played pool this weekend. No, we didn't. Yes, you did. You're right, we did. And I played Madden instead. That's right, and he didn't want to play. He doesn't want to play with me anymore, and it's my fault. It is. You I should him. have, I should have let toned me it down a little bit more. He well, should've... we got to the end, and it was like I had like a handicap. I was like, dude, this sucks. We don't have to do that. If you want to just keep losing straight up, we can do it that way again. It just wasn't, it wasn't ideal. It or... reminded me of when I play Warzone, and, you're, and you have a bad night, and you lose every game, and you're like, this isn't fun at all. That's what it's like for me playing like everything competitively that I do. Yeah, because <laughs> I never want—I will never want to take the time to get good at something, and I'm never good at things right away. So I'm just in no man's land. Well, the problem was I was—I got good at like I got good enough at pool that like I would go to bars and I would beat everybody, and you'd have and then I would play with Francis, and then he would smoke me, and then that's kind of when like it's kind of like a come down to earth moment. I and don't Fra- feel good about that. I, I, it bums me out. I enjoyed playing pool with you. You're, you're like playing against a five-year-old on a Fisher-Price basketball hoop. Like, you need to let him win a couple times. I should have done. But, you know, the problem for me is that I actually enjoy competing with people who are better than me. And because I get, I find that I get better when I play against people. Like, if I, I play tennis with players that played, you know, D1 tennis, they kill me. But I enjoy hitting with them because they make me better. What's your next hobby going to be? Darts. 
No, darts actually I do enjoy, but that's not a hobby. Let's pick up darts. Let's get into that because I'm not great at that. So we would probably be more level on that. Darts is like something that you do once a year, maybe. No, I think we could get into a league. We could do it. Or you could a get darts a dartboard. A There's dartboard a league. at your apartment. You could practice at your home. I do have that long ass hallway. <laughs> You yeah. could definitely throw darts in there. Yeah. You could. That High long ceilings, ass, dark too. hallway. Yeah. But uh, I need something. <laughs> it's not something that you guys can do together. I need something that I can do with it. Oh, that's right. We need that for you, Download too. Download Warzone, dude. You wouldn't play with me. I would play with you. But you wouldn't play with Pat Bev? You, it's so hard for you to shake these racism allegations. <laughs> it's so hard. And I'm offering you every fucking branch that you could fucking climb out of this. Yeah. The things you said about Anthony Weiner's wife, nasty <laughs> things that you said about whose wife? Anthony Weiner's ex-wife, Huma Abedin. Oh, I didn't say those things. I heard you saying them earlier. No, that was war mode. They said that. <laughs> I didn't say that. I don't know if you were reading a transcript. That's already out there. You're plagiarizing war mode. <laughs> <laughs> You're stealing their most racist bits and then doing them yourself. I was Seth gonna wear Simons my war mode. Preemptively blocked me on Twitter. Really? I've never interacted with him. I don't even know who he is. I've never seen him. And he just blocked me, which f- felt like a badge of honor. Yeah, that is. Yeah. One of the right? funniest things in that article was it said, uh, it said Shane Gillis and uh, Billy McCusker and Spud uh, all declined to comment, <laughs> which is just funny to the, like Billy and Spud declining a comment <laughs> on an article about them. Yeah. Like going, Spud going through his publicist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Should I talk to him? <laughs> I was going to wear my war mode, my war mode bucket hat today, but I couldn't find it. Or you fucking cow, you, you turtled in cowardice in your one chance to support your brothers as they're getting canceled by the woke lynch mobs. <laughs> <laughs> you could have stood with them. Instead, you're basically, uh, it's a tacit uh, compliance with Seth Simons. Sass Simons over here. Good God. <laughs> Not me. Yes. That's yeah. what everyone's saying. Everyone Sass Simons. Saying. Sass Simons. <laughs> Francis used to hang out with Seth all the time. They used to actually play pool. I, we saw him at Society once, and Francis oh. went up and was like, Seth, what's up, you fuck? I would never. <laughs> I haven't seen you in a minute. I Who would should we never... cancel tonight? Yeah, Let's yeah. pick someone. Let's also, pick someone. great job on that Shane thing, dude. You killed that. <laughs> Let's pick someone's life. To <laughs> Bro, he like... wrote that for the Daily Beast. Yeah. That Beast was mode. the one that did the worst thing about me. They hate me. Oh no! Oh, that's probably why he has you blocked. No, he. I think he has me blocked. He probably he didn't want to see that I've done murder like Legion of Skanks timeline. Lu- didn't Lewis choke him? Did he? Yeah, that's crazy. At the stand, he came to the stand one night, and Lewis held him up against the wall. That's crazy. It was like you're Usually, not welcome here. I feel like comedy's not that serious. You got <laughs> choke slamming. He's people. the guy that like cancels everyone. Yeah. And Lewis is the and guy like that, like, a, boxes everyone. He's a true. comedy critic. Sense. Yeah. And has come after Lewis's friends. Yeah, I guess it's true. If you don't take yeah, comedy I, that true. fucking seriously, there's not a seat at the table for you. I would have gutted him. <laughs> I would have brought him out back and sliced him open. Ooh. What? Just feel like he's going to take this clip and write an article about you. About me? There's nothing to write about me. About you taking a Bowie knife across his vital organs and letting them <laughs> spill out like I Niagara already said. Why does Shane Gillis fan? keep supporting a guy who says he would slice me up? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's good. He doesn't write about shit like that, dude. He's the amount of death threats that he's probably gotten. Yeah, I don't know. Who uh, who is he? I don't know. I feel like he's we a comedy not critic. Did he say him? something? Yeah, I know. I think we should cut all of this. No, no, no. <laughs> Definitely not. No, yeah. That's pussy shit. What? This is like we're betraying a the... comedy critic. We're gonna be like, no, we don't want the critics to be angry with us. No, I think it's just you don't want to give him any more attention. Nah. Yeah, that seems to be the general idea. Nah. This is fun to talk Anyways, about. Welcome to Son of a Boy Dad podcast. <laughs> it is. Um... No, this is fun to talk about. What did he write about you, Francis? He said you said no, he wrote he about you on the Daily Beast. No, no, he didn't write that. Another guy did. When I got fired, they wrote that guy wrote that I had slut shamed a murdered girl and that I had <laughs> made a lot of uh, which was ridiculous because you know I've never slut shamed anyone in my life. I love sluts. Yes. You um, exalt sluts, but I especially the dead ones. <laughs> then they truly deserve to be <laughs> you exalted. You are on fire today. <laughs> I'm swinging for the fences, and I love it. I personally love it. 
<laughs> it's fun to sit next to such big cuts. Yeah. <laughs> to be in frame with someone. Who- <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, have at it, boy. Yeah. Feast. Very nice. I, I don't like think the- I've said anything crazy I like at all. the bites you're taking. Yeah. Very good. No, but then uh, what was the other thing? He wrote that. And then he went back through blogs I'd written and he said that I had made a bunch of homophobic, uh, like it was, was that I was homophobic because he pulled up articles about me wanting to fuck Frankie. Yeah, it's so which, funny. I, how is that homophobic? I'm, it's, it's gay. Yeah. <laughs> it's just gay. It's yeah, not it's homophobic. Spot, it's, it's gay aspirational. Yeah, did he think I was kidding? <laughs> yeah. Clearly, he misread the blog. Well, Sounds the like detail, he's homophobic. Yes, exactly. The detail that you went into, like you obviously had to go there mentally and fantasize about it. I said exactly how I would address him and that it was his uh, feminine qualities that made me attracted to Frankie, which, if anything, is straight. True. I, I get like a, a joy out of watching like comedians and the people that they have like problems and beef with. Like... Seth Simons, or what's the dude, something Gelman, some, Brett Gelman, yeah, or uh, J- Jake is. Flores or whatever, <laughs> like all these people that comedians like wind up beefing with just uh, is, uh, that's like a different level of entertainment. And I imagine that's what it's like for a comedian to watch when Barstool's like beefing with somebody or like uh, when there's internal beef at bar stools, just this entertaining. It's not necessarily comedy itself, but it's like salacious. Yeah, it's a little uh, reality TV. Yes. Which, by the way, the New York Times wrote a 15 page piece on Sandoval, the guy from Vanderpump Rules. Yes. Who Sash? Maybe we could get into that together. Would you watch? Start watching Vanderpump Rules with me. I would me? watch Vanderpump. Would you? No. Would you re? Oh. But what did he do? Did he Don't do something bad? Well, me. last year he was the talk of the entire reality TV world because it turned out that he cheated on his girlfriend of nine years with another cast member, another Ooh. girl, and the story broke. And it was her some- best friend too. Somehow it became it. It almost transcended reality TV. It was it, it. It launched the show into a different echelon. It became their highest rated show ever. And now the other shows aspire for that level of yeah. tea. Okay. Oh shit! I actually I remember when this happened. They had like a sit down with all of them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember when that happened. And uh, I didn't follow it in real time, but then I read this expose because it was it was fascinating. And this dude has no ability to differentiate between his life and the show anymore. It's it's amazing. He's been doing it for twelve years now, and quite literally cannot turn it off. Where he has a friend who's on the show. Best friend. They own two restaurants together. Schwartz and Sandy and Tom Tom. And he wants... <laughs> and I he... went to Tom Tom once. I got I got very sick from a drink called the Daddy Diablo that has a buzz button in it. it made me throw up. What is a buzz button? It's like uh, it's like the, the inside of like a cactus or some shit like that. And I was throwing up all over the... like There was like a sliding door to the bathroom of the hotel room I was in. And I threw up so much that it got in between the cracks of the sliding door. Oh. It like I was like scrubbing the floor at like four in the morning as I was throwing up on it. You know, you just leave five dollars. I left so much money for them, yeah. like an apology note for yeah. the for the ladies. They're like, "This is too much." Jesus, did you drink too much, or was just it was just the, that? The, the buzz button in the Daddy Diablo made me sick. Jesus, the buzz anyway, buttons will do that. The buzz button really gets you on the Daddy Diablo at Tom Tom and uh, Beverly Hills. But go ahead, Francis. Well, so he had a friend on the show. I mean, I don't feel like I should. I'm just adding color. I I know, but you you are really. I just want to add color. Yeah. Uh, you know you know it so well. Uh, he said that in this thing that when he wants to text his friend Schwartz, yes, that guy's best friend or he wants to talk to him mm-hmm. about life, mm-hmm. he can't stop himself from contacting the producers first to see if they can get cameras over so that they can record his conversation with him. Even Damn. if it's something that like is innocuous. Well, like it- it's like an addiction? He just doesn't think that anything he does anymore should not be on camera. And he can't even tell if something is worthy of being on camera or it's not. It's making him so famous for the worst reasons possible. And he still wants to get more famous. Instead of wanting to be like, hey, I need to put a fucking cork in this and slow down this like leak of like 
toxicity that I'm putting into the world and just not become more famous. He's like, it's more important that I make the world more toxic, be more toxic, and I just need to get more famous. He, he feels responsible for the gigantic success of this show, and he is responsible for it, but for bad reasons. Yeah, he's the most uh, like twisted and toxic human being on television. It's and fucking awesome. He's a villain. Yeah, and and uh, he they used to like they would put in his home where they would shoot often. They would put papers over the lights to create uh tv ready lighting and when the season would end filming he would take it down and now he just leaves them up year round so his home is a per perpetual set and well they own the home together he cheated on his wife and now they're in a what was that vince vaughn jennifer aniston movie breakup the breakup they're in a the breakup situation where they both want the house but she sued him in court to force him to sell the house so i think that's over now and now she's in fucking Chicago. She's in the show Chicago, and it's have it's breaking record numbers because the same way he's become the biggest villain in the world, this woman didn't do anything except for get cheated on, and now women are fucking standing for her at a yeah. Taylor Swift yeah. level. Sympathy is a commodity that ha knows no bounds. So ladies out there, I said if, it better I, myself. if I could give you yeah. any advice, get your ass cheated on. Yeah. Get your ass cheated on. The, the world will love you. Yeah. yeah. Right. Sass, are you here are you here for all this, bro? I don't know why I literally don't know anything that you guys are talking about. <laughs> That's how I feel when you guys talk about like Sneako? streamers and rappers. Sneeko and fucking uh yeah. Jack Doherty. <laughs> the laundry people, La whatever the laundry day. Yeah. Bro said that they would come on, bro. Bro said that they would slide. Yeah, I talked to bro who said slide. Wow, dude, I really He said definitely sliding. <laughs> It's worth a it's worth a read. It's worth reading that it's because it's read. so twisted. I just you I, I that sounds like pretty dark. It is. He it's went like a on this dude, Nick. It, it, no, it's deeply mental ill. He went on this dude Nick Viles podcast. This dude who used to be on The Bachelor was kind of a villain on The Bachelor. But uh, this dude, this very uh, toxic guy, Tom Sandoval, went on there, and he just like all every aspect of his like mental illness was on display. They're like, why are you late? He was like, well, you were late for my podcast. And oh, <laughs> it's like, and it, and it was proven that the guy wasn't late and he was just like lying. And he's like, well, what do you want me to do? Like, I'm so sorry. Like every part of his, uh, every interaction that he has is just like another chapter of like a psychological handbook on like somebody who's so fucked up. Yeah. It's, uh, Dude, they should really stop people, filming him. Those people, honestly. I know, those people get into this thing. He, apparently now, like, he's in this per perpetual cycle of fucking up and then processing it in front of a camera. He believes that everything that happens to him, he needs to process it in front of a camera. And I'm so tired of that word. Processing? I, pro I like to process nothing. <laughs> Just keep chugging along. Yes. Bury everything. That's exactly right. <laughs> Whatever happened yeah. to just being miserable and sullen? Yeah. Our brothers from World War II. Like, if there's anything we could take from Band of Brothers is yeah. the, the interviews at the beginning where the guys just suppressed everything, oh, never yeah. shed a single tear about the yeah. atrocities that they with, withstood and committed. I think they cried a lot in those interviews. No, they didn't. There was definitely there tears. There was, like, a tear, and it, like... There, dudes there was were so were old, like, like those dudes were like shit, like vibrating. No, it came out as a cloud of dust out of their eye socket. <laughs> <laughs> just old ass dudes. Just... I, I, I told you about my first experience with Band of Brothers, right? Have I told you about this? No. When I tried to watch it, and then they showed the interview in the beginning, and I was like, "Oh, it's a fucking documentary," and I turned it off. <laughs> and then, and then I rewatched it, and I was like, "Dude." That's like 15 seconds into the show. Oh my God. I gave the show 15 seconds the first yeah. time I tried watching it. And I was like, dude, I'm not watching a fucking. And the interviews are the best part. Yeah. I was like, I'm not watching a 10 part documentary. Yeah. These guys are old. <laughs> yeah. The fuck would I want to hear these yeah. old guys for? That was like the ultimate, like, don't judge a book by its cover. Um, I like Shifty when he's like, uh, he's like, they asked me if I wanted to come over and see Bill Garnier. <laughs> and I said, I don't, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I, I would have had a hard time with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like his leg I mean. was blown off and he's, you know, you don't want to see that? Yeah. He's like, well, I didn't think I'd, I'd want to see that. I just broke my heart too much. That's the yeah. suppression that we're talking about, yeah. though. Like, the guy's like, well, I don't, I didn't think I wanted to see him. Not like, I was so traumatized. Like, yeah. it's just yeah. like, it, it's, 
Italian and I, or I mean, more Irish than Italian, honestly. It's just I mean, like, what that guy's saying though is pretty much it was like the most pain he's ever felt mentally, and he's just like, I didn't think that was gonna be good for me. No, that wouldn't be quite what I was in the, <laughs> yeah. had the yeah. palate for yeah. at that time. It was like the deepest, most severe trauma he's His ever brother. experienced. Yeah. yeah. The man who he'd been through the literal trenches yeah. of warfare. I with. decided at that point I would never see him again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'd be? What I was curious about. We knock people in this world. I've heard this refrain frequently recently about how if if you know somebody who does not have any best friends that are longer than five, ten years or whatever, like that's a bad sign about that person. Uh, because it means they can't hold friendships and they're just flitting from one person to the next. Well, Jordan Woodruff said, if you're losing friends, that's a good sign you're growing. Yeah. She said that? Modern day philosophers. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't mean to completely take steam out of what you're saying, but... Oh, by the way, you're going to want to cut that? No, no, no. We're (laughs) not cutting nothing. We're not cutting nothing. (laughs) It's like the fucking... We're talking Bravo and... (laughs) We're girls, bro. (laughs) But what, so what are you saying? So you, you think it's a red flag? Which oh, I don't. I don't. Well, I was going to say those people would fare very well in war. Oh, yeah. Because getting over your friend dying in front of you and moving on is, is probably something that follows from people that were yeah, like, well, girls. I used to be friends with him. Dude, it's also got to suck. Guy. It's yeah. also got to suck just from the aspect of like when you're out in war. It's like when you're doing a group project and there's one person in the group that you like and then they don't show up one day because they're sick. And then you're like, God, I got to fucking sit with these people all day. I gotta Imagine being in war and you got like one buddy and then he just gets shot in the head. And then you're like, now I got to fucking figure out a whole new group. <laughs> yeah. I have no one else to hang around with. <laughs> not, not great. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot. Like War is a lot of socializing. It's a lot like group projects. It is. <laughs> It's a lot. I mean, dude, they're just walking around 90% of the day, just walking. And there's some other. soldiers who just, like, put their name on it. Like, yeah. cowards who just, yeah. like, didn't do shit, like, hung back. Yeah. It's I, a lot of socializing. What a funny way to... I mean, it is. It's true, but I think it's true of, like, the American military or, like, you know, very developed nations. I think that they're, like, if you were to ask, you know, uh, the, the fucking northern Iraqi forces that the Kurds yeah, were yeah. like, did you guys happen to have any card games while yeah, you were being under yeah. siege well, fun. from ISIS? They'd be like, no, we didn't have fucking downtime to get songs. to know each other. Yeah, um, They probably did have some good songs that they sang. But I think that there's an element, Francis, to what you're saying that, uh, you know, if you're not great at forming bonds, if you're not great at forming friendships, war could be a little bit easier for you. And I think that's that's adult women in a lot of senses. Yes. Like uh, women in their 40s should be the soldiers that we're sending out on the front lines instead of 20 year old dudes. Dude, I've had this thought a lot. Like we should uh, we should let women fight fight wars the, as like the, as our main as our main guys, though. I think it would. I don't know what that would look like. And I'm sure it would I'm look like Tomb Raider. To it would be this. incredible. It'd be sexy as hell. Oh, interesting. It'd be yeah. like Laura Croft. Yeah. It'd be a bunch of Joe Lees and but G.I. Would, James. Would they fight or would they just solve it? <laughs> they'd probably <laughs> yeah. solve it. They'd probably solve it. Talk, talk it out? Yeah. No, they probably shade the enemy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they'd throw some <laughs> deep cuts of shade. The <laughs> yeah, they gaslight. Band of Sisters would look like an episode <laughs> of Vanderpump Rules. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I heard what you said about us, and I think, look, I just want to talk to you about it. Like, They'd be like, talk? why do you think we're trying to attack you? We literally were not doing that. You're <laughs> making that up in your head. <laughs> Did you see what they're wearing? Did you see their outfits? <laughs> All right, I got one other thing I wanted to mention. There's a bathroom right here, yeah. and there's two urinals. There's, there's one that's stalls. low and one that's high. And I went in there to pee before uh, the episode. Not, not when you were in there. I was shitting. Uh, but no, a different, a different time. Pebble this was Beach a in there, though. Pee. Nothing came out. Was I next to you? No. Did you hear like a, a raspberryish fart no. to kind of? No, I I went in. And I went in right before we were recording. You were you were sitting right here. Oh, so I'd already I had already yes pooped. Got it. Got it. Got it. So so you were uh, you were in the tall urinal or the small urinal? Um. I was in the tall. Well, no, no. Okay, yeah, right. So I, this was not the time when you were in there. Yes, I was. I used. The, I was using. I went to use the small urinal, so it's it's much lower. And then, a guy who works at this company that I'd never seen before, who is very short, 
and I'd not seen someone this short who worked here. And you I don't feel know bad if he listens to this podcast, but I uh, promise you he doesn't. He had to come in and use the other urinal, which was much taller. And it was almost too tall for him, such that he kind of had to stand on his tippy toes <laughs> to reach the ledge in order to make the pee go in the urinal. And I noticed that he was standing on his tippy toes because I was so far away from the urinal because it was so low that my pee was splashing out of the urinal and hitting his feet. Oh, my God. And an, That's all, sexual assault in the office. It was every aspect of this. R. Felt Kelly went to jail for that. Like yeah. a hate crime from me. Like I had opted for the lower one, which clearly should have been his. I'll Why pick, did you go for the lower one? I didn't think about it. Uh, it's like going in the I handicap just, stall. Just, you don't think that there's going to be a wheelchair boy behind you. It's going not even for the I lower would've... urinal is always a choice that you're making. Probably I prefer it. I'm picturing him like coming up and flopping his. Don't, don't you? You prefer the one that's closer? Yeah. There's a part of me that thinks that if I use the one that's more level, the risk of the pee splashing back onto my genitals is greater. Yeah, that's true. So I'd rather have it be farther away. And so worst case, it's getting on my boots. Your stream must be incredible. <laughs> it's your prostate health must be fucking godly. I'd imagine your stream is like the width of a can of Coke. My streams is, I got, <laughs> I got stream like Sneeko. Oh, very good Sneeko reference. stream. Very That's good reference. No, I'm picturing him flopping his dick up on the <laughs> bottom ledge like, uh, Kevin McAllister going into the store and like putting money on the counter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm home alone. Just him like fucking trying to get some loft onto his dick Dude. just so he can rest it so we can pee straight forward. Did you see that Shaq had a shoe come out where it holds a hidden can of Pepsi in the heel? No. <laughs> That's how big his feet are. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> it holds a hidden can of Pepsi. Why the, the heel fuck? slides away and he can put a can of Pepsi in there and still walk. On it as a normal shoe. What the fuck? It's crazy. I'll show you a picture. Is it like uh, something that he's selling or that it was I don't just know like exactly. a gimmick? Like it, when you I don't put know. a goldfish I... in a disco boot. <laughs> Let me look it up. That's actually kind of awesome. That's cool. Yeah, I feel like a fucking sucker. I can't put any I fucking... I used to have those flip-flops that had the bottle openers on the bottom and I thought they were awesome. I was like 10. I would like try and I would like try and find oh the rainbows? Coke bottles that were like glass that I could <laughs> use them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, those are fucking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I met some dudes from Manchester at a rap battle that gave me a pair of underwear that had a pouch over the penis where you could put drugs, and they were called smuggling duds, <laughs> <laughs> which is such a good name for underwear that you fucking yeah. smuggle drugs with. Hmm. A pair of smuggling duds. smuggling duds. You ever use them? Uh, I don't know if I ever smuggled in my smuggling duds. I wore the smuggling duds a ton, but I yeah. don't know if I actually smuggled. I must have gone to a festival or something like that and used the smuggling duds yeah. once or twice. Now at the airport, though, they're fucking like... I mean, I, I had my penis touched on my way to Los Angeles two days ago. Really? The back of a guy's hand. He's you like, know, I, need to, use touch, the back of the I hand. need to touch your penis. And they like tell you beforehand... They're like this is what like this is where the inconsistency was because I like buttons a button fly and that must have triggered it off and I was sexually assaulted by a, a TSA worker at the airport. Jesus, button fly by the way one of Harry's favorite ties to fly, <laughs> flies to tie. <laughs> Not familiar. No, no. You can't tie one. I don't know what a button fly is. I guess your fingers aren't. Oh, that's enough. when you're wanting to catch. I was just trying to figure out if, like, why <laughs> why the backhand doesn't count as groping, but the front does, and I feel like it's because there's more, you got more feel on the front. But I feel like if you could if you could turn your hand all the way around, then it would still be groping. If you just mold your kilo of coke into a penis and ball setup, yeah, and you're smuggling duds, I feel like that'd be a good way to get away with it. Like, how do they must know exact? I wonder if there's training of them being like, this is. Here's 15 different penises. Here's 15 different penis densities that you can be sure. Or like, can you find the drug amongst all the penises? Like, yeah. how are they training dudes <laughs> to know what like a penis is supposed to feel like? Doesn't feel like my dick. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, but what 
You went 13 for 15. That 14th <laughs> one, you thought it was Coke Rocks, but it was an STD. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a herpes. That's just a bad rash. It was just a bubbling dick. What is the... Are people really at airports putting drugs in their pants? I thought that I thought they didn't even check for drugs. I thought the whole thing was that they were checking for bombs. I, mean, I, I don't think they tr- check for personal use marijuana. No, they're not worried about marijuana. But I, 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 you hear about the what are they called? The duds? Smuggling duds. Smuggling duds. <laughs> you hear about the duds, and you wonder, well, if those exist, then why is someone being so desperate as to shove heroin up their asshole? <laughs> Cause it's why not try the? It's a little fun. It's a little naughty. <laughs> How often are they getting caught? With the smuggling duds and thinking, oh, shoot, if only I'd boofed this. Well, they I mean, I also think that there is like some uh, like they weren't really comprehend. They didn't like cup my nutsack, feel in between my dick and balls or go behind my nutsack. They, just they like went to the top of my leg, went to the top of my leg and then just touched my whole penis with the back of their hand. Yeah. Like full just sexual assault. But they like I could have still hid the hid the drug somewhere if I really wanted to. Mm. I think I feel that they just wanted to to uh, touch my penis. I think that's why I think you got raped. <laughs> is that what this is? Because I'm, I'm slow to process guess, this trauma. Because I'm, tr- I'm touching my penis right now. And there's I mean, I don't even know if that's a penis. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I'm feeling absolutely nothing. <laughs> With the back of your hand, you really can't tell. I mean, but if it's honestly like if they're gonna go as far to touch your penis through the pants, at least touch, at least like use your hands. Don't use the back of your hand. Yeah, at least like, like if that's something that they're use r- your routinely doing, I'm assuming there's a reason they're doing it, and they should do it the right way. There's I, a right way and a wrong way to do that. I had to wait. I had to sit, stand there, and wait. Uh, cause the guy was like, I need to, uh, I need, I need to get him. I need to get the right head space right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need to I get you hard this. for this. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to hear any music or is there yeah. any magazines you like to watch? No, he was like, uh, he was like, I need my supervisor to be here. Damn. To make sure that it wasn't inappropriate. I, yeah, I guess, probably. I guess so. Or they mm. needed some kind of clearance to molest me. He needs a spotter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, one time Somebody I just <laughs> holding his back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. So he's guiding his hand like a t-ball coach. <laughs> easy, easy. Not too much. Mm. Or now, now push, push like yeah. a coxswain yeah. on the fucking crew team. Go, go, go. Do they bring you to a separate area, or do they just keep? They you asked out in the me open? if I if I wanted to go to a separate area. And you I was said, just like, "What did you say? Not, not you know." Until I was you like, buy "If you're gonna dinner? fucking buy, yeah, 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 buy me, dinner buy me first. dinner first at least. I'm gonna. You should say that next time. I'm definitely gonna use that." And they, right when his hand is on your dick, go, at least buy me dinner. <laughs> at least buy me dinner. You think they would laugh? God, no. I think they would laugh. That would be pretty funny. TSA yeah, wait, I could see you doing that for sure. Yeah, I would do it. Yeah. Break the tension. Yeah, why not? So next time we go to the, when we go to Madison, let's put a eight ball of Coke on your dick. Or just like put like some uh, like baking Metal. powder. Yeah. I don't think we need to use real drugs for this experiment. But fake right. drugs, but make it look like drugs and then have them tested or something like that. Or just be like, I have a metal plate in my penis. <laughs> just put like a, a, a finger splint over your dick or yeah. something like that. There are always those people that have like plates inside of them. Mm-hmm. Penis plates. Penis plates. What were you about to say, Francis? One time I was flying back from Colorado, actually. In Colorado. I, I had lost my driver's license while I was there. So I flew out and then lost my driver's license somehow. Left it at a bar. I don't know. And then, then I flew home. And when you don't have your license coming back, they'll let you come through, but they give you the most comprehensive search I've ever experienced. Yeah, yeah you got to like go check in before you go to TSA, right? I mean, coming through the security, they were like, that's fine, but we have to do a very thorough search. And they, it was around the penis, it was like, like are, there, yeah. they knew every inch off. of my body. Yeah, they explored me with, with no. There was Your no. Tone. <laughs> I don't think they were using the back of their hand. Really? Yeah. Or like the four hands. It <laughs> like was remarkable. Hands like it your... was to the point where I was like, I I need to just get rid of my license completely. Because <laughs> this is is this every time? The best. So you guys do this every single time. It was incredible. Start flying from Newark to LaGuardia. <laughs> 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 okay. 
Just needing a cigarette. I left my license in Queens, so I'm going to fly over. (laughs) JFK to LaGuardia. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Because they're close to the closest. Because they're close. Because they're close to each other. They're the closest two airports, statistically. I guess does Minneapolis and St. Paul do they have? No, I'm sure they don't have different ones. I have no idea. Midway and Chico- Midway and O'Hare. Those are pretty close. Those are pretty close to to mm. one another. San Francisco and Oakland. Burbank and LAX. Burbank yep. and LAX. Yep. Yep. Ooh, I've never flown into Burbank. Are people flying into Burbank like I've that? I've done that before. Really? I think I'm flying into Burbank sometime soon. Yeah. On, on yeah. what airline? Burbank Air. <laughs> not a Delta. I know you're not flying on Delta. <laughs> yeah, bubble gum. My 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 friend Matt flies into Telluride, and he flies from Denver. And the airlines that he flies, the names of them are so funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's we like were, Sunspot we, Air. Dude, we were, no, there's Sun Country Air. <laughs> and we were flying, but we, dude, we were we were taking we Ubered to the airport, leaving Denver together. And the Uber driver was like, "What airline are you guys?" <laughs> I was like, I'm United. And he was like, I'm Key Lime Air. <laughs> There's no signs for Key Lime Air. Yeah, they're like not trying to advertise that they fly yeah, Key Lime yeah. Air. <laughs> Key Lime Air is crazy. So she just dropped us off at the same place. Starting a new airline is fucking crazy. Yeah. And naming it something that's not like pretty regal sounding, that doesn't sound like a bank. Yeah. Like, it, you're you're naming it after a dessert? Hell yeah. no. Mm. I have a whole bit about Hooters Air. I remember that. Yeah. I like that bit. Yeah. Oh, I heard... Uh, no, I still do it. Where did I hear that? Amy oh, Amy Schumer. Sh- yeah. I stole it from her. <laughs> I figured Air. she's going to take one of mine. I'll take one of hers. Have you, she's getting killed for her face. Yeah. What are people saying about... What are, what, is there a reason for that? Does she have a disease or something like that? She I said think. so. But it was it endomyotrosis or something like that. It was one I'd never heard of. Yeah, yeah. But I believe her. I believe her too. You believe, believe women? all women? I believe women. I believe women. You believe women, Francis? Yeah, oh. I believe that it is that, and not you know Heart uncontrollable uh, digesting of gummy worms. Yeah, because that's what Sass does, and he doesn't look like that. No, not yet. I'm getting there. Yeah. Just kidding. I'm losing weight. What was that video? Has you ever seen the video of the... Yeah, probably. Yeah, definitely. Have you ever seen the video of the dude, uh, and he's talking to the kid, and oh, the kid yeah, gets yeah. bullied because he's fat, and the guy's like, did they call you names like Lardass, Double Wide, Big Big Kahuna, <laughs> like shit like that? It's, have you ever, you ever seen that? I do remember that vaguely. What was it? Uh, the, it's your... just like an old TV interview. Hmm. Yeah, they what they up. call you? Things like Lardass, Double Wide? <laughs> <laughs> It's an so adult funny. saying it to a kid. It's an adult saying it to a child, <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, those—that's what they called me." Fat shaming like existed uh, from the advent of fat people in like the fifties until like the early nineties. Yeah, and that there was like forty-one years of it being just like as normal a, a, as like going to church or getting the newspaper. Like fat shaming was just part of the fabric of American society. Yeah, for a and it long was like time. that was like the best jokes. Like your mom is so fat. Yes. Yeah. And then it I mean it it all it all went away. What was it? It was your mom is so fat she steps on the When she goes around the house, she goes around the house or something. There was one that was like, like Your mom's so fat when the school bus drives by she says Twinkies. Your mom was so fat when she goes to school, she sat next to everyone. Yes, that's something like that. There was one that was like, your mom was so fat when she steps on the scale. She says, I was asking for my weight, not my phone number. (laughs) That's good. good Nice. They were all pretty bad jokes. Not really. Not if you're a black comedian, like snapping on someone at a club or something like that. Like Buddy Love and uh, the Clumps or whatever. Yeah. Mm. Or what was uh, the Nutty... the nutty professor, like Buddy Love, gets skinny and then he goes on stage. Yeah, and he like go does like a run of Yo Mama's so fat. Like we getting all mamas, dude. That movie did so much uh, revenue. I believe it. I, I that is, like it was all, when men could be men. Those all those Eddie Murphy movies. It, 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 it's hard to put them into present day context, but like it, he had a run of movies where people wouldn't even watch trailers There's eddie Mur- murphy's in a movie we're going to see it i believe yeah. it i I missed that time eddie murphy was great i don't know what fucking slowed it down for him was it that he was cruising he like, might have been cruising he, he had was like cruising he had a, a nice kids tra- a, i thought he said he wanted to spend more time with them i thought it was like a tra- he had like a transsexual tryst that was always the rumor there may have been truth to it i don't know 
I will, I don't hold it against him. Honestly, if he had done that now, he'd be getting more movie roles. Hundred percent. Right. The shit dried up if they're like Eddie Murphy. He he That's should go exactly back to correct. it. He should be putting that on the front page. That's exactly right. Fuck yes. The Murph man. The Murph man. I'm not very. I haven't watched nearly enough Eddie Murphy stuff. Oh, that was my, that was my generation. Yeah. yeah. Have you watched uh, any of his stand up? Yeah, I've seen some of it, but I've never. I haven't seen all the specials. I was obsessed. Yeah, I knew every word. I used to go to school and say, just quote the jokes and say, pretend they were mine. Oh, that's the best. Going to school and like memorizing a joke. That was part of the fabric of American culture too. Yeah, like an Anchorman line. Or I guess you guys were probably like in your thirties by then. Anchorman. Yeah. Yeah. How old were you when Anchorman came out? Because I remember you were, I was you were a uh, twinkle in your father's eye. Probably like three. I was eight, I think, or excuse me, eighth grade, I think is when. How I, when did it come out? My guess would be that like 2005, 4, 2004. So I was three. Yeah. I and was my like, God, dude, that movie changed everything for us. <laughs> I remember when that came out and I remember I looked at my dad and I said, comedy's back. The pendulum has finally swung back our way. <laughs> From the dark days of Adam Sandler yeah. to the dawn of the Will Ferrell age. Finally. Yeah. Comedy is ours again. Yeah. From that lull in Saturday Night Live when Rob yeah. Schneider was trying to carry. <laughs> I was Finally, three years comedy's old. back. I looked at my dad and I said, I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> Just a little hiccup in the comedy market. <laughs> Just a little divot. I tried to watch, uh, I watched three movies on the plane back and forth to LA. I watched a uh, terrifying movie that gave me goosebumps, made my hair stand up, Misery. Fucking awesome. Then I watched, I rewatched uh, Saving Private Ryan. Wow, banger! Fucking Fun. great, Fun. banger! Grabs mm-hmm. you by the fucking balls. Grabs you by the sack instantly. And then on the way back, I knew I was gonna fall asleep, so I wanted to watch a familiar one. And then, uh, so I did the Big Short. Ooh, yeah. classic! Which is classic. So fucking good. What a great so movie! Times. I feel like I'm learning a little bit more every time I watch it. Like Same. I feel like I. Well, I feel like I used to get so high for every movie that I watched that like I just didn't retain any movie. So now I'm rewatching every movie that I've saw over the last 15 years, and it's like seeing it for the first time. Yeah, mm. I completely cooked my brain. It's like there's no way I'm gonna be able to learn about the housing bubble collapse. That's why while they have Margot Robbie in fuck. there. But I, and there's like it was Ariana Grande in there. I know Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez, Bourdain is in there. They have people explaining it. But even my high brain was just like, oh, it's Margot Robbie. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I wasn't yeah. picking shit up. It's, it would be impossible. But now it's just like I, I finally fucking get it, dude. I'm basically a quant. I always wonder about so Margot Robbie's in that movie for two minutes. How much did she get paid? How much did she get paid? Well, I was guessing like I, I don't know why a hundred to a hundred twenty thousand dollars came to my mind. I was gonna say two hundred. That sounds about right. Yeah, two fifty. Could be two sixty. Honestly, we need to please sound off in the comments. Sound off in the how comments. much you guys I mean, think that it's Margot one Robbie got. Set. That's one, it. one day on set. One day on set. She's on set for one day, and they get it, dude. That's like that was probably like an hour on set. That was probably no, like she no, was no. Gonna get, she was gonna get lunch with her friends. She's like, oh, I gotta go do this thing real quick. She's in it for like two dude, seconds. Everything takes a long time. I bet you that took at least five hours. Oh, Sass, you've never been on set, bro. No, I haven't. You obviously have never oh, been haven't? on set. You've no. never been on a set? No, I've never been in a movie before. A oh, TV show or TV, you whatever you know, series. Set. I've never been on a TV show or a commercial. I feel like it's something you guys would know if I had been in a movie or a TV show. I guess you never have been on set. Wow, that's, that's yeah. fucking crazy. That's a shame. But I mean, yeah, it's definitely a full day for her at least. She got there at probably 5 a.m. for that. Yeah. She spent about three hours in makeup. I mean, she's in a bathtub, so they had to make it look as salacious and nude suggestive as possible and there's probably a ton of takes she had to rip a quick monologue they probably broke for fucking lunch in the middle of her being in the bathtub had to reset yeah that's what happened because her hands were getting all crinkly because she had crinkly hands i mean that's gonna fucking show up on the yeah that'll you ruin drain the, scene. the water refill it make it warm every time because it's getting cold quickly you know yeah dude you know what i saw a picture of recently <clears throat> that fucking blew my mind that they were even doing this it was a picture of jerry rice ass naked on the cover of an ESPN the magazine for their body the issue. body issue. The yeah. body issue. Why the fuck were they doing that, dude? Why was ESPN the magazine getting like male athletes ass naked to put them on the cover of their magazine? Who is that for? Dudes. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but it did it it 
garnered a lot of attention. People talked about it. But but why? I don't know. But I liked a lot of the bodies in that. You have a better body than Jerry Rice. That's, that's not, not me. true. Look, look it up right yada, now. Yada, yada, yada. Look it up right now. You have a better body, yada, 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 than him. Look it up right now. But what, what is he, 65? No, this is an old issue. No way. I oh. remember seeing pictures of Adrian Peterson shirtless. Oh, you don't have a better body than him. And thinking, you could I've never. never. I've never seen anything like that. Did that confuse you as a young man? No, it didn't. It did make me think that my goal of making the NBA was probably kaput. Yeah, Adrian will do that to you. Shattered my dreams as well. AP, and it also made me sad that, you know, my dad hadn't beaten me with a willow switch. Is that what Adrian Peterson's dad did? That was the whole controversy. No, he did that to his son. George Jordan Peterson. (laughs) Isn't that his dad? Imagine if Jordan Peterson was Adrian Peterson's the adoptive of the family father. Unit I'm joking. Is amplified by the Minnesota offense. Just he starts crying all the time. You Jordan only have Peterson's. so much time with your Vikings. <laughs> Cherish them now. Um, I can't. I'm getting no internet. I just want to show you guys Jerry Rice's naked body. Mm. Dude, you're acting like we've never seen this before. We study this. Have you seen that dude on Twitter, on on like Instagram and TikTok, and he's like, uh, his whole thing is that you can't work for him unless you have six pack abs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny. That's pretty good. Is that him? No, no, it's this one. It's 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 one of the. Uh, here, go ahead, take a look at that. Oh yeah. I mean, like half the set can see his fucking cock and balls. I I bet you they're wearing a Birkin. Why do they have him out in a field running? Doesn't that seem a little racist? Yeah. Like Doesn't that not, does that not feel weird? You just have a black dude completely naked sprinting through the wilderness. I don't know. Man. Look at it, dude. Hold it. As an exa- I would have I would have uh, said let's now Hold it. I want to see if this. your penis appears out of thin air. I wouldn't do it. I don't know. I'm not getting na- I'm not getting naked. I wouldn't get naked for the yak calendar. I'm not getting naked for the fucking body issue. Are they doing that? No. They, they tried to make me get naked. They tried to make us all get naked. Like Enrique is going to photograph you. Yeah, they were like, uh, yeah. To make you feel more comfortable that our gay <laughs> employee is going to photograph you. The they one person to... who could be turned on by this is going <laughs> to. They did. They tried to have, they tried to make me get naked. And I said, I'm not doing that. Yeah, same. And then the, the yak fans were like. Hey, this is why he's not funny. <laughs> he refuses to show us his genitals. First, he wouldn't get sucked off by the stripper. And now he won't take his fucking dick out. Sass doesn't get it. Sass isn't fucking built for a bar stool. He won't show us his penis. Show us the cock. All right, what are we at? Oh, We're there. We got three minutes left. What do you have? Ads. We also might need to cut some things. We're not cutting anything. This well, has I been think amazing. We're definitely cutting. All right. What? Well, I don't want to say it now because now we're gonna then we'll have to cut this too. So we're not gonna say anything else. <laughs> no. Then the, what? The other thing. Or yes, maybe. No way. There's a lot we have to cut. Something, no, there's nothing. Some things that I'm thinking about. What? Yeah. You guys are pussies. You're a pussy. For what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You Whatever. could have said I was a pussy. Whatever. Not... Fuck this podcast anyway. I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have Fuck you ever this seen the, the clip of the dude on the podcast where he's like, I try to be funny for you guys and I fucking <laughs> no. can't do it? There's a guy on a podcast and he fucking breaks down crying and like his co hosts are like, <laughs> That's super uncomfortable. If one of you guys did that, I'd be pissed. I try. It's not as fucking easy as it looks to be fucking funny for you guys. I did saw that, that Dana White thing, was yeah, that real? No, obviously. Oh, not. I don't think Dana White would have gone to fucking Howard yeah. Mandel's studio and then been like, I do so many <laughs> fucking podcasts. Fuck this shit. I'm out. It was pretty funny. It was funny. It was really funny. I mean, Dana, uh, you know who went on Howard Mandel's podcast? Tom Sandoval, his first interview after all that shit happened. What? And Howie Mandel didn't know anything about it. Thank God his daughter did. This podcast is for the fucking ladies, dude. Mm. Talking about pat downs, female soldiers, uh, Vanderpump rules. What else? 
What I've else? never listened to his podcast. So I'm talking. I'm not. I'm talking about this podcast that we're doing right now, being for the ladies. Oh, I thought you were talking about oh, Howie Mandel. I didn't know podcast. that. Either. You said his podcast is this, for the this girls. This podcast. This podcast. Mm-mm. I've bad diction. Diction is done with the tip of the tongue and the teeth. They say, Francis. Mm. I'm sure you know that. Those are good. That's a good warm up there. Yeah, mommy makes me watch my M and M's. Yum yum. <laughs> mommy makes me watch my M and M's. Yum yum. Mommy makes me watch my M and M's. Yum yum. Mommy makes me watch my M and M's. Did you ever have to do that? No, we did to sit in solemn silence on a dull, dark dock in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock. That doesn't sound like a voice Awaiting warm-up. Awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shop shock from a cheap and chippy chalker on a big black block. But instead of block, I would always say cock. That's funny. I was literally just going to say that. I would always good. change it quickly. That's good shit. That's really to fucking good. sit on a big black cock. Damn, that's really fucking good. That would good. make me laugh. Nothing funnier than changing the lyrics of a song. I would do that at my camp, Camp Magar, back in the day. I remember Camp Magar. Uh, yeah. yeah. My sister told on me once, though, for, for changing the lyrics. She told me to my mom. What were you changing the lyrics to? I think Camp Cigar, maybe. <laughs> 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 not, as good as, lyrics not as good as cigar. Black Cock, but still funny. I mean, it's... Uh, How it, old were you It was you in the, the Clinton Black administration, so... That would have been in high school. Uh, I did some killer. theater. Did you ever do any theater, Seth? No, I did uh, senior plays, though. That's theater. Yeah, that'll be theater. What are you talking about? This exactly But I, uh, I, I think I've told this story before. I, ha- I was an extra, and then I, I missed my one... Uh, Part. You were in the, in the, I went the to the bathroom. Lot, <laughs> I went to the bathroom this is, and I this came back and they were, like, high they were like, it's over. <laughs> and I was like, God damn, my parents were there. <laughs> like, fuck. There was just one scene where they had like 30 people walk out and then we were supposed to like all be like hula hooping or some shit. And I, and I just didn't do it. What I went to play? rehearsal. I went to rehearsal like 30 times and then I just didn't do it. What play was this? It was like student written plays. Oh. Jesus Christ. It was like a parody on uh, Harry Potter. Very, very funny. I bet. The yeah. theater kids were horny, man. You could. That, oh, that yeah. was an untapped salmon farm. Oh, yeah, it was. I didn't know about it. And then I got into theater in high school. And, man, I remember one time this girl. You were kind of like Zac Efron. She wrapped me up in the play curtain, and we were stuck in there together. <laughs> what the fuck? And I was like, ah, because she wasn't uh, particularly attractive. And then so uh, like, get the fuck she away was, from me. She goes, she goes, what now? <laughs> I was like, get me out of here. So I dropped down she and went TSA out to the bottom. <laughs> yeah. She used the back of her hand at least. She, she kept, she kept wrapping up the curtain. We were r- rolling around, and I don't know. It's, that, that sounds crazy. like you got me too. Well, <laughs> you did. Who was directing the play? Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> it's it is uh, like theater kids are horny because there's like this seed of them in like of wanting to be like uh, on stage, seen by people, famous, liked. Like there's this big thread of all that that goes yeah. into like not like us, yeah, not like us who've all made careers and being on stage. Well, I'm not horny at all, luckily. You're the horniest guy I know by far. <laughs> what have I ever done that's horny? Tried to fuck me a couple times, that's for sure. That's because that was dominance, purely. <laughs> <laughs> that was to try and put you down. That was to try and put you under my thumb. I wanted you to hold my fucking pocket and walk around the prison yard, the barstool yard, the way that Jenks walks around with Frank. <laughs> Frank is just crushing Jenks. He's fucking him like a prison, <laughs> a prison top. <laughs> I had to fuck cuz. I, I had to fuck cuz because I had to let him know who was boss. <laughs> Did you ever watch Prison Break? No. How how rough and rowdy could a fucking a prison show be if it's on Fox? I need it to be on HBO so I can True. at least see their cocks in the shower. Yeah. Yeah. Like Oz. I watched a little bit of Prison Break. That's how when I first found out about the holding onto the pockets thing. I mean, you were a bitch. Hmm. <laughs> Never would catch me holding pockets, dude. It, it occurred to me that if I ever did go to prison, uh, I would just kill myself as fast as possible. Yeah, I think that's the general idea. Have you guys seen harder. Sam Bankman Freed in prison? No. Yes, dude. That picture is so funny. He's like posted. He's yeah. like posted with a bunch of like serenios. <laughs> He's like just up against the wall and like some baggy at, but they all have like whatever shoes they want on. Like they're not just wearing like prison issue shoes. They all have like. 
kind of they're all they're in there dressing, bro. They're kind of doing it. Yeah, mm-hmm. they can get fits off. They're definitely getting fits off. Yeah, they look tough in there. Crazy that sagging pants came from prison. From from like try, it's like showing cleavage in prison. Yeah, showing then, your ass crack. And then is that every, right? Yeah, and then everybody just came out into the world and just started fucking. Some people sag and show their pubes off. That's a big. That's actually making. Uh, Bro, I just caught someone right doing that. Yeah, front sagging. Yeah, that's like the new wave. What? Go underwearless and just flash the pubes a bit. Ugh. This is dudes that are doing this. Yeah. But you want to have a full bush. You do not want to have a clean shave, or else it looks really weird. We're just show. You're showing mound then. Yeah, yeah you're showing you your mound show, bar. You don't want to be showing off stubble, <laughs> or just your pubic mound. Yeah. What if you got to that point where you could start to show the cleavage between shaft and sack? That's you what, know on both sides. A neck showing neck. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a dude showing neck with like a deep sag. He was showing his. But old it's funny neck. because they they managed to not show off the ass at all. <laughs> I think it's the cut of the pants. Yeah. Like they need to make like low rise jeans for men so they yeah. can show neck, Just but in still the front? It, it like captures the top of the ass. High butt, low high butt, front. low ro- <laughs> Yeah, like <laughs> dipping down. It's like cleavage. It really is cleavage for men showing neck, flashing a little bit of fucking stem. <laughs> like one of those old bicycles where the back wheel is way bigger. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why did they? Why did they take those? Why are people not riding those anymore? I think it's just too hard to get onto them. They are hard. Occasionally, you'll see someone in New York City riding something like yes. that, and you're like, "Why?" Or yeah. a dude, yeah, a Tension whimsical seekers. Brooklyn man going down the street on a unicycle. Yeah. Bro, how do you get onto a really tall unicycle? I think you need a, a couple people to help you, you need out. To walk up a ladder or step onto it from a ledge or something. I can't even ride a fucking bicycle with no hands. Yeah. I used to be so good at that. What happened? That used to be my thing. I would drive around town with my hands just sat, uh, just hanging down. <laughs> it's like notorious. significantly less comfortable. Yeah. It's more of a pain in the ass, but I'll be like, yeah, I don't, need, I don't even need my hands. Core Cut strength. Core strength and balance. Yeah. You're a skater boy, though. Mm. I could also do some pretty sick wheelies. You could? If you turn the gear to one. Dude, wheelies used to be like basically outlawed in New York. There was a, it was a Philly thing, bike life. Yeah, twelve o'clock gang. Twelve o'clock gang. Now twelve o'clock gang is ripping Seventh Ave. I see. I saw them yesterday. Yes, they're like twelve o'clock gang is fifty of them. Yes, twelve o'clock gang. You would know if you saw. You didn't see a twelve o'clock gang. He saw bike. Yeah, gang I think he saw like bike life. Five hundred of them. Oh, and they like it's a big problem. I don't know. He Philly. said he saw fifty. Like Butterly and 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 uh, Mike Rainey are always tweeting about them, and they're like, I hope these guys fucking crash and die. Really? They hate them. Wow. That's that's fucked up. Those guys rule. There, you know, you're not even allowed to. The cops aren't allowed to chase them. Twelve o'clock gang, at least. Yeah, they shouldn't. They should be a protected class. They are, or because, they could be CIs. They could be informants. Yeah, because if they, because there's so many people were dying in chases. The mm. cops, so many cops were dying, and the people on the bikes. Cops trying to do wheelies in their f- four wheel cars. Yeah. Have you ever been able to do a wheelie on a bicycle? Yeah. 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 Put it in gear one. Start pedaling really fast. Just the top tire just comes up but i would only do it on grass yeah me too i was too afraid to do it on cement have you seen this guy who goes to people's yards that are unkempt yes and edges them yeah yeah i can watch that for hours it's so calming it's amazing he's really good the guy that's really bad is the guy that tries to clean people's windows and his whole channel is just him getting denied and then people being like dude Get away from my house. <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps uploading the video. I've gone down s- these rabbit holes with this guy. He's all he. I don't think he's ever actually successfully cleaned a window before. He, he shows up he and joking? he knocks on the no, dude. He knocks on the door and he's like, and he, and he'll the comment will be like, just got to keep being persistent, just keep getting out there every day. And he goes out and he's got the camera set up and he's like, he's like, like you're wearing black boots right now. He would he'd say you answered the door. You'd be like, hello, sir. Um, your name, Francis. Okay, so good news for you. We're actually offering a deal, $100 off for anyone wearing black boots today. And they'd be like, huh, okay, <laughs> what What do you do? So I'm gonna, you're, I noticed your windows are not totally clean, and it's just something that no one pays attention to. And he's like, so we're going to do a little scrubbing. It's all it's going to cost you is around $500, and uh, we'll be out of your hair in no time. And they're like, yeah, we're good. Five hundred dollars? Yeah. It's like insane. And then I'll be like, oh, well, this actually just came in from corporate, black jeans as well. We're gonna cut that down to four hundred dollars. 
and the people are like, dude, just please leave. Like, I, this is so, so he's annoying. artificially creating a high price and then taking prices off. Yes, it gets down to like fifty bucks, and they're still just like, you're s please leave now. Anyone with white skin, two yeah, eyes, yeah, yeah. lips. Yeah, yeah, that's fucking bad. I don't understand. I guess like cable companies do the same thing. It's just like mm -hmm. hustle culture. This shit sucks. Though. Hustle culture is taken over. And it's well, just be as good people. at the at, at at your job as the guy who does the lawns and the edging for free. Yeah, you know? but it's, it's like this this guy is clearly he's like been denied so many times, but he's like, no, something great is gonna come from this. Yeah, like awareness for his business or some shit. Yeah, nobody wants their windows cleaned. No. Or it's so easy to do on your own. It's like that's a very low effort. Thing. Exactly. No one. No one's looking. No one's like sitting in their house being like, "Fuck! I need someone to come here and clean my windows, and I'm gonna pay like them." Like praying on a fallen star. Yeah. I wish I may. I wish I might. Yeah. Someone to clean my windows tonight. The lawn guy is awesome though. Yeah, he's good. His videos are so good that I've actually. He says, "Click the link in my bio for the full video." I've clicked that link multiple times. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. It's always a treat when he comes up on my timeline. Yeah. Hopefully it happens to me tonight, lawn guy. Yeah. I was worried about uh, whether or not the people whose yards he cleaned up kept up with it. I'm going to go with no. Because uh, it would piss me off if they got that incredible gesture from him and then just let it fall into It's like, we're going to give you a free liposuction. Yeah. And then you just get fat again. Right. Horrible. Horrible. It's like 600 pound life. They follow up with people on 600 pound life. Now there's 700 pounds. <laughs> You've undone everything. Yeah. We staple your this staples burst on your stomach. Oh. Speaking of, I'm starving. Yeah. Let's get you some let's food. Get this a wrap. Let's get let's get Francis some beans. <laughs> All right. They're good for your heart. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Son of a Boy Dad podcast. We will see you on Tuesday. Goodbye.